Hi there, how's it going? My name's Terry and I've got another engineering mechanics problem to go through for you. So let's get straight into the problem. Okay, so uh, here it is, another typical uh, textbook engineering mechanics problem. So uh, I've got description here. So what we're seeing in the, in the picture is part of some mechanism. Okay, in the textbook, they probably wouldn't have described it like that. They would have just said, here's a lever with a, a force applied through these air um, bellows or air spring. And if you've got a stop up here, that's a smooth connection. So I think I've got that written in the, uh, in the rest of the description here. But um, as I like to do in, in these videos, is just to think about, well, what could this thing really be doing? Okay, because often your textbook problems that are presented like this uh, are a bit abstract and um, are only kind of part of the problem. So, you know, if this is a lever, um, you know, and we've got this air bellows pushing on here, you know, this is not really going to be just a stop. I mean, what's the point of pushing something up against something that's stopped, you know? Uh, this is going to be some part of the rest of the machine or mechanism or whatever it is that this is a part of. Right? Just in the textbook, they've simplified that so that you can't see it. And all they tell you, I think, let me say the next thing. Um, oh, this is my description. I've changed the description from the textbook. So this activates another part of the, the, the mechanism, and that's represented by contact with a pin at C. Okay. Uh, depending on the textbook, it may say that pin contact is smooth. Uh, but I think I probably just assume that uh, as we go through the solution. All right, so, um, so if we say that this air bellows is uh, applying a force of F to the lever at B, and that force is one kilonewton, then we want to determine the reaction forces at the pin C. So how much force are we applying to this uh, pin up here C? and uh, what are the reaction forces at the pin support at A. Okay, so let's have a look at what our solution plan might be. So for all of these rigid body equilibrium uh, engineering mechanics problems, the solution plan is much the same. So first thing is to draw a free body diagram of the object that we're wanting to analyze. So in this case, that object is the, the lever ABC. So we we'll draw a free body diagram of that. Then the next step would be to write the equations of equilibrium. And then of course we want to solve those equations uh, for our unknown forces and or moments. And then finally, we, once we've got our answers that we've been asked for, think about and check our solution. Okay. So the first part is to draw your free body diagram. Now your free body diagram can be just a simple, well, the first part of your diagram can be just a simple line drawing like this. Okay, so I've simplified this uh, lever's shape to just two lines. Okay, you can do it like that, or you could draw a more representative um, outline of the body. Doesn't really matter. Uh, in fact, I've done that. So. Yeah, so I started with just the, the, the center lines of this shape, uh, and then I've put in the outside because we've got the contact over here. Right? But the main uh, dimensions or locations that we want uh, are shown here. So put on your dimensions, make your free body diagrams nice and large and neat so that you can easily see where things are located and you can easily refer to them as you're going through your solution. Okay, label your points. So in most textbook problems, the points of interest are already labeled for you. Uh, and you're told to solve for forces at A or C or wherever. Um, if you are doing this as a design task from scratch yourself, then you know, you've got to come up with your own labels. Okay, and often when I see uh, students doing their free body diagrams and putting dimensions on, the, um, on their free body, you know, they're, they're a bit lax uh, in how they dimension so that, you know, they'll have here, for example, where this goes to, to point A, right? They might have the line out here somewhere and the 200 out to here. Be accurate. Your dimensions mean something. 
Uh, and, and I think a lot of the time as students, we tend to get into the habit of relying on the fact that you're given the question. Okay, but as an engineer um, designing something or analyzing somebody else's design, uh, you know, you've got to come up with all these dimensions yourself. So take your time, be deliberate about being neat about how you draw your free body diagram. All right, so once we've got that, uh, we can start to apply uh, the forces that are acting on this thing. So usually you start with your loads. So I'm pretty sure we've got here my force of one kilonewton acting in the direction that's indicated by the, the problem statement. Now we need to start to think about well, what's happening at these connection points. So we've drawn our free body. So the reason it's called a free body diagram is because it's free of everything else it's connected to. And we replace those connections with the forces and or moments uh, that are generated by those connections. Uh, so the first thing I do is to make some assumptions. So if you're not told anything about the connection between things like this, then uh, you can generally assume smooth contact. Okay. Um, if not, you're gonna end up, well, most likely end up with more unknowns than you can solve for. So if you've got just a 2D problem like this, and uh, you end up with four unknowns, then that's one, unknown too many because you've only got three equations of equilibrium to solve for so you can usually know that you've got something wrong in your free body diagram if you've ended up with more unknowns than three okay so we're assuming smooth contact at c um, and that will help us to draw our free body diagram if we make that assumption then we know that the reaction force will be normal to that surface okay so because we've assumed smooth contact, we can then say that the friction force along parallel tangent to that surface is negligible, close to zero. So our reaction force is just perpendicular to the surface. Then we should give it a name, give it a label, and make it something sensible. So I've just called it reaction force R, subscript C. All right, so then we can next move on to our point A here where we've got a pin connection. Okay, so the pin connection here will support force in any direction. And as usual, we represent that force in any direction by its uh, components, vertical and horizontal. Now they don't necessarily have to be, but that's usually the most convenient. Okay, so once we've put on the directions of our components, we need to think about the sense. Now you, you could just put them in the positive uh, X and Y directions or you can try and work it out. So if we have a look at this problem here, if we take moments about point B, for example, RC is going to generally, is going to cause a, a moment uh, clockwise about point B. So therefore this force here will have to be causing an anti-clockwise moment about point B. The horizontal component passes through point B, so there's no moment there. So I've assumed a horizontal to the right uh, for the horizontal force. And I've assumed that this force is acting vertically upwards. Now they may or may not be correct sense for those um, components. We'll just find out as we go along. And hopefully you know by now how uh, you'll tell whether you got the sense correct or not. All right, so let's label these forces. So I'll call this one RA, so reaction at A in the X direction and reaction at A in the Y direction. And uh, we should really, because we're using X and Y coordinates, we should really indicate somewhere on our solution what X and Y uh, is assumed to be. Uh, and we also need to assume a direction for the moments because our equations of equilibrium, we've got uh, one, two, three unknowns, RC, RAX and RAY. So three unknowns, uh, so we're going to need three equations of equilibrium. So at least one of those will need to be the moment equation. Thinking about writing our equations of equilibrium, right? we've got some of the forces in the X direction equal zero, some of the forces in the Y direction equal zero, and some of the moments anti-clockwise positive equal zero. So now we need to make a choice about which one we use first. And usually the, the best choice of which uh, equation to use first is the moment equation. 
Okay, because usually what happens is if we choose uh, the right point to take moments about, it will eliminate two of our unknowns and we can solve for one unknown straight away. So if we look at point A over here, we can see that RAY and RAX are both passing through point A. So therefore, they will have a zero moment about point A and we'll be left with only RC as our one unknown in our equation. So we can just do a little bit of simple algebra and solve for RC. Okay, so let's go to the next. All right, so I just repeated uh, my free body diagram on my next page. So we can uh, refer to that as we look at our equations of equilibrium. All right, so we've got some of the moments anti-clockwise equals zero. We've now chosen point A as the point about which we're going to calculate moments. All right, so this little A here that we put, or whatever other point you put, is very important in your solution because this tells the reader how to check your equation. Right? Without this here, they've got to guess what you're doing. Okay? Uh, and if you've made a mistake, it's impossible to guess. Right? Um, if you've got it right, then it, it's possible to, to guess what you're doing. Um, but you know, that presumes that you know what the answer is. Uh, if you don't know what the answer is, if you're doing this from scratch, um, you know, you, you have to indicate clearly where you're taking moments about. All right, so having done that, we're going to look at our forces. So down here, we've got our force at 60 degrees. Usually the easiest thing to do is to find components of forces like this, because we're already given this dimension here as a perpendicular distance to that vertical component and the horizontal component passes through point A, so that will have zero moment. Up here with RC, we could try and work out perpendicular distance or we could um, find horizontal and vertical components or a combination of the two, um, this depends. All right, so let's see what I do as we go through the solution here. Okay, so let's start with calculating these components. So this horizontal one here is on the adjacent side of this angle. Right? So this will be the cos component. Right? If you remember your Pythagoras theorem, the right angle triangles. So this is F cos 60 and the vertical one here, so if you know, on this side over here, if you're looking at that triangle, or if we'll look at this triangle here, this angle over here would be 60. So it's the opposite side. Well, the component is F sine 60. Or if you like, if you put this angle in here, right, between the force and the vertical component, that angle in there will be 30. This angle in here, this is 30. So this will be F cos 30. Right? So you should know that cos 30 is equal to sine 60. All right, so now that we've done that, we need to look at RC. So what I'm going to do in my solution is to try and calculate this perpendicular distance here. Okay, so note that the perpendicular distance to point A from the line of action of force RC is not going to be 600. Right? It will be 600 plus a little bit. <clears throat> so we need to do some geometry and trigonometry to work out that. Okay, so we want this distance here DAC right, as the perpendicular distance to um, RC. Right, we could have done this down here as well, right? We could have extended this line of action and found the perpendicular distance from that line of action to point A. If we draw a line here through uh, this intersection point, we've got a perpendicular to this line here. So DAC will be 600 plus the length of this little side of the triangle here. Okay, so that will be 600 plus 200 sine 15 degrees. Okay, so you can see, you know, if we're looking at this little triangle here, the length of this side here is 200 and the angle in here, right, because this is uh, 15, we can see that this angle in here will also be 15 degrees. 
So we can do that calculation and we get uh, that DAC is 651.8 millimetres. Okay, so if we now start to do our moment calculation, so we've got our one kilonewton force here. The vertical component is one sine 60 times its perpendicular distance, which is 600 plus 200, which is 800. Now we need to think about whether this is clockwise or anti-clockwise moment. So if this force here is pushing up, then that's going to tend to rotate this member about point A in the anti-clockwise direction, okay? So pushing up tends to rotate around that way. So that's anti-clockwise, so that one's positive. And then we have our force RC here to deal with. So uh, I've already put in here the negative. So if we look at this, this is pushing down to the, the right. So about point A, this will tend to rotate the component around this way. Around this way. So that's in a clockwise direction about point A. So therefore we have the negative sign here. Uh, so there's no other forces acting anywhere else uh, away from point A. So that's the, uh, all of our forces causing moments about point A. So that's all equal to zero. So now we have just one very simple equation to solve for our unknown force RC. So do some simple algebra, rearrange that and get 1.063 kilonewtons. Okay, so uh, now that we've done that, we can start to use our other equations of equilibrium, which are our uh, force equations. So some of the forces, forces in the horizontal direction equal zero. So we can just work our way along. So we can start here with RAX, which is shown in the positive direction. And then we have RC cos 15. Okay, so that's just the horizontal component of this force up here. And then we also have the horizontal component of our applied force here. So F cos 60, and that's going to the left. So that will be ne uh, negative. And that's all equal to zero. So once again, we having now found RC, we can substitute that in here. One equation, one unknown, solve for RAC, uh, RAX. Okay. So here I get minus 0.5268 kilonewtons. So this negative sign indicates that uh, when I drew my free body diagram, I drew the sense of this force in the wrong, uh, wrong way. Okay, so the force here is actually acting from right to left. Okay, so in the negative x direction. All right. Um, so you can just leave it like that. Never ever go back and change your free body diagram, right? Because if you do that, then that makes all your other calculations or other, all your other uh, working out incorrect, right? Because, because all of this other working out has come from your free body diagram or should have. All right, so now, looks, now let's look at some of the forces in the vertical direction or in the y direction. So we'll have R-A-Y here, indicated as going in the positive direction, minus R-C sine 15. So the vertical component of this force over here, R-C, so that will be acting in the downwards direction, so negative. And next we'll do add in the vertical component of uh, this applied force here. Okay, so that will be F sine 60, and it's positive because it's acting upwards in the positive Y direction. No other force is acting, so that's all equal to zero. So once again, we have um, one unknown, RAY, substitute RC from what we calculated before and substitute in our applied load F of one kilonewton. All right, so we get minus 0.59 kilonewtons. So once again, this indicates that I've got uh, my force uh, around the wrong way, okay? Um, and you can see that because uh, 
Now this force here is acting more um, vertically than this one. Right? So the vertical component of this will be greater than the vertical component of this one. Uh, so we should be able to see that this one is acting downwards. So our final answers. So always uh, summarize what you've done. And if you've got more than three significant figures in your working out, then you need to round up to three significant figures to indicate the, um, the correct accuracy of your answers. So RC uh, uh, is 1063 newtons and RAX is 527 newtons and RAY is minus 591 newtons. In fact, um, you know, this is four significant figures. So really I should round this to 1060 um, newtons or call it 1.06 kilonewtons. Okay, so now having found our answers, we should check those answers, think about our solution uh, and make sure that we've got, um, haven't done anything silly or got uh, obvious calculation errors. So one way we could check is to go back here and say, okay, we're going to take moments about point A. The perpendicular distance of these two forces that we've got here are about the same. You know, perpendicular distance of this one is going to be roughly 600 and something, right? Uh, which is the same as this. So you'd expect that these two forces would have roughly the same order of magnitude. Okay, so let's over see over. Let's see our solution and see what we've got. So here we calculated uh, 1.06 kilonewtons, and our applied load is one. So we can see that we're about right. Okay, if we'd had 10 kilonewtons, then we should quickly realise. Hang on a second, there's something wrong here. Okay, this force has to be about the same magnitude as this one. Right, or if it's 106 newtons, right, we should realise that this is not quite right. Okay, so over here, let's see what I've... Okay, so I've written this down here. Right? So that discussion that we've just had, um, I've just written that here in my solution for you. So what other things could you do um, to calculate your, uh, or to check, um, check your calculations. You, know, you can substitute your um, values for RAX and RAY into another moment equation. So you could take moments about uh, point C, for example. I think that's all I've got here. No, so that's okay. So if you wanted to um, write down what I said previously about thinking about the line, uh, the, the perpendicular distance between the, the two, fo two forces and their lines of action. Yeah, so that's the end of that. Right, if I just go back to the page here. Right, so if we took moments about this point up here, right, bit of a tricky uh, bit of work to do. Right, or you, what would be easier as a check would be to take moments about this point here. Okay, uh, and then put these values that you've found back into that equation and um, make sure that it comes out to be zero. If it doesn't, then you know you've done something wrong. Okay, so these checks don't guarantee that you've got your answers correct, but hopefully they will highlight uh, quickly for you whether you definitely made a mistake somewhere. Okay, um, also be aware that you know, if you're still learning this stuff and not confident with it, um, you know, if you oops, take moments about this point, you've got to make sure that you get that calculation correct. Because right? if you get that calculation incorrect uh, and you don't get zero, you, you may have had these things right, but your check calculations were wrong. But nevertheless, you know, it, it at least makes you stop and think about your answers uh, and makes you think about whether you've done it correctly or not. Right? And, and, you, and just through doing that, you may uh, realise where you've made a mistake somewhere, right? or at least give you more confidence that you've done the thing correctly. Okay, so uh, that's it for that problem. Hopefully that was helpful for you and 
and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.